What's going on Port fans, welcome back to another video on the channel and today we're going to be talking about who could possibly be Port Adelaide's breakout star in 2024. Many names have filtered through this, uh, well, this title as such, the breakout star of, of each year and obviously last year I think we saw Miles Bergwin really take that, uh, take that title for the year. We've seen previous years as well where kids have come through and they've really taken it to their own. Butters, Dersma, Rosie, um, to name a few of obviously... Um, taken out uh, what's been yeah, a breakout year pretty much obviously Butters as well last year I think really showcased his uh, full talent um, we're not particularly looking for big name uh, players to come and take the next level I think we're looking at players on the list that you would see that you, you might look and go they've been fringe players or they haven't taken their opportunities but maybe this could be the year and that's what I've done today so let's get straight into it let's talk about who could be Port Adelaide's breakout star in 2024. Like I said, many names have come through uh, my mind looking at the current list for this year and um, you know we could name a few and I'll start off by some honourable mentions or players that I would be keeping an eye out for anyway. Uh, Dill Williams has obviously um, been fantastic down in the back uh, pocket last year in particular. Hugh Jackson has been taking um, you know, his He's going to the next level in, in the SNFL as well for the Magpies. And I think those types of players are the names you've got to be keeping your eye on throughout the year. And if I'm you know, a Port Adelaide fan, I'm definitely looking at the Magpies team this year and really trying to see who could be a diamond in the rough to make a break into the best 23. Obviously with the sub. Speaking of a sub, this bloke that I'm going to mention now is um, my pick for the 2024 breakout star for Port Adelaide. His name's Josh Sin. Um, he's, he's obviously only played the four games, was picked 12 in 2021. The draft that, um, yeah, I think it started a bit of a an interesting period for the AFL in, in that draft. And obviously we've seen some great names come through and taken and made their name already. Um, but I think now that Josh Sin is on the list, he's been only played the four games, one game in 2022, been injury ravaged. Countless amount of soft tissue, hamstring injuries, and, and and countless other foot injuries as well. Like he's he's really battled um, to keep himself on the park in his early days of his career, which is sad to see. Obviously, you, you don't want that to occur, and um, he's obviously pulled that short straw so far out of the draft. He did debut in 2022 um, against the Hawks in round two. Obviously, the, the that famous Russell Ebert match that was terrible to watch and terrible to be at. Um, but yeah, he's been filtering in and out of the Magpies from then with injuries, as I said. But then in 2023, he played the three games, was subbed off, I think, twice, was the sub at one stage, and again, didn't really find his feet um, at half back or um, on the wing, um, and, and just was you know, never got any rhythm or con um, consistency in his game. Again, injuries affected his year, and you know, he just hasn't found his feet at AFL level yet. Definitely been a compatible Sandful player. Um, for the Magpies, but I don't think he's, yeah, as I said, found his consistency yet in his football. Now I look at the preseason, I look at the notes that have come out, the people that have been attending training. I haven't been able to attend as yet and and, and see for myself exactly what it's looked like. But um, from what I can hear and what I've been told, Justin has been training predominantly in that in that one side at training at the halfback flank. Um, if you don't know exactly his skill set and what he's based on and what his game is, he's a halfback flank or, he's a, or, or a wing as well, can run through the midfield a little bit. Uh, he's got plenty of speed. He's a game-breaking um, player. He can break the lines. He's got a penetrating left foot kick. Um, he, we've seen it in the SNFL. He kicked multiple goals from outside 50. Um, you know, and, and with opportunity, I think there's a lot of fringe players in Port Adelaide's side that made a name for themselves last year, kept their spot because they were good once they got in. But if you can get good and keep your name on that 22 and, and keep yourself in the side, then why can't Josh Sin um, do the same thing? The one thing for me for him is to stay fit. Um, and once he gets a bit of consistency going in his game, if he, if he starts the year in the ones, uh, playing in the AFL, I think he will find his consistency uh, in his game and really take it to the next level. Um, I do think... He wasn't pick 12 for no reason. Like He has a set of skills that Port Adelaide need and, and can address. It's that hit-up kick. It's that penetrating kick inside 50. It's that game-breaking um, decision-making that he makes in and out of the game that can be the difference, I think, for his game and for Port Adelaide as well. Um, I don't think we've had that penetration 
from half back as often as we'd like, and I think Josh Sim can do that job. He can do it on the wing. He can run through the midfield. He can kick goals. You know, he's a flexible half black, a half back flanker that can take his game to the next level. And that's why he's my pick for the breakout star this year. I think he's going to be a player to watch. And I think a few people are noticing that for him. Um, you know, you're coming to your third year of AFL, um, being in the system. You have an, an opportunity with new players at the club. Um, it's a fresh year. Uh, and there's no one really that's been setting the, the world on fire. You're fighting with you know, players like I said, Dill Williams, uh, Kane Farrell at halfback. You know, these players that uh, are floating around and, and have been good, but they haven't set the world on fire yet. And I think Josh Sin has that opportunity. And I'm not taking anything away from the, any other players. I think this is purely, I'm just basing this in the pro column for Josh Sin to perform. Like, that's as simple as that. It's a bit of motivation there for him to go out there and say, this can be my spot. I'm going to play 22 games plus this year and really make a name for myself in my third year of footy. So my eyes would be purely on Josh Sin to see what he can produce. And um, let's see if he can really make his namesake since he was that pick 12 in 2021. Let me know your comments below, Port fans, and what you're thinking about this year in terms of a breakout star. Who are you keeping your eye on um, throughout the preseason? And what are you looking forward to most from that player this year? Um, I'm very excited. We're obviously getting into the, the February period of the season. Um, and <laughs> We're going to get into trials. We're going to get into pre-season matches, internal trials. We're going to get into club launches, season launches. And before you know it, in a month's time, we're playing footy. So keen as a bean. Look out for plenty more Port Adelaide and AFL content to come your way, Port fans. I really appreciate everyone's support and everyone uh, watching the channel and, and keeping up to date. Obviously, the support with Pairs on a Pod, uh, with, the, with the podcast there with Treaders and Matthew Bishop out already. Um, everyone else that's not a Port fan that's watching, I've seen a lot of support from everyone there as well. And it's just been great. It's been a good start to the year for the pair. Um, we're going to keep it going. Maybe the breakout star for the year is the pair. Nah, that's a bit self-confident. I'm not that. We'll just keep ticking away, eh? Let's see what the boys and everything else can produce this year. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Anthony, and as always, come the pair.